<laughs> it's amazing. Our, as parents, we thought, you're wasting your time sitting in front of the computer screen doing all this shit. That's a stupid thing. Get outside and play. <laughs> Now, I may not be the audience you're going after, but I'm having a good time listening to you guys. I mean, ideally, we would... We're, yeah, you're not, like, the target, but hopefully everyone could enjoy it. Well, I am. At least our parents <laughs> might think it's okay. A long, long, long time ago, uh, we had this compact, C-O-M-P-A-Q, because mm-hmm. it was not small, computer. It was mm-hmm. a huge, luggable computer. It had a screen that was about three inches by three inches and it was green only mm. there was a game you were the blinking light right and you just moved it from room to room so basically if this is a room it always had a space to go out that were doorways and some of those doorways took you to different levels and so it was like being in this 200 room hotel mm-hmm. and the only reason you knew that you were getting attacked is because the words would say you're getting attacked Mm-hmm. Fight back. Well, you didn't have anything to fight back, so you'd die right away. Mm-hmm. And then you'd learn that if you did something, you'd get some defense, like mm-hmm. a helmet or whatever. Mom played that all night long. She finally beat it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> all night long. I fell asleep. You know me, I fell asleep. Yeah. Well, she introduced me to video games, and then it seemed like she never played them. Because it was a waste of time, right? Right. Well, it is complete, totally. But, but what isn't really? One of the things, you'd go into this room and you'd have a gun and you'd have a knife. You'd have a helmet and a shield. Mm-hmm. When you'd be in there, you'd be battling this thing and you'd be hitting it. And, and you'd, this is, you'd hit the enter button, mm-hmm. you know, to use your stuff. And then it would say something like, you know, the monster hit you. And then it would say, the helmet helped. So instead of it taking 10 points, it only took two or something like that. So the statement, the helmet helped, even to this day, Mom and I will say, you know what, we're out someplace and she'll stub her toe and I'll say, the helmet helped. Mm -hmm. So if you say, the helmet helped, she'll remember what game it was. Because she spent Mm -hmm. all night, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, so what you're saying is this is in my blood. (laughs) This is... Well, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> but that's possible. <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 3, Episode 2. It is Episode 2. We're still at the very, very beginning. We're very early in this game. Final Fantasy 6. We've left Nersh. Yeah, we're out in the plains of the world, the first fields, the first forests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this game's about to just, like, show off in the next hour. It's just like, look at all of the stuff we put in here. Uh-huh. So let, without any further ado, let's let's get into it. Yeah. Do we know where we're supposed to go right yeah, now? Yeah, I think Locke was like, we should head south to Figaro. Right, that's and right. And you're like, okay. All right, so we ha- we, we're heading south. Yeah, I'm not uh, not at all upset about walking around in the woods right now. We got a th- we thing we gotta do. It was earlier today that we listened to the finale of last season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, walking around in the woods. There's yeah, there's the woods. We have like a map on the screen. And there's a map on the screen. Wow, look at that. Wow. We walk into the desert and get into a fight, and it's just crazy the different backgrounds that they have for the mm-hmm. battle screens in this game. Look at the effect on the desert in the background. The heat waves. Yeah. A sand ray. It's like a stingray, <laughs> but it's in the sand. Okay, so the the white dots on the mini-map. Are like places. Are cities. Yeah. Yeah, the mini-map is like, uh, I don't even know how to describe this, but it's kind of a connect-the-dots looking map. Yeah, well, you can see, like, the shape of the continents, and then there's little white specks that yeah. show you, if you're going this way, you'll run into something. You'll run into a speck. Yeah. Hey, I, Figaro Castle! Yep. This is exactly where we wanted to go. See, I was supposed to have a crown on my head, but it wasn't supposed to be a slave crown. It was a ruling crown. Everybody else is my slaves. <laughs> if you what, think about that's it, what those hats are. If you think about it, a king's crown is basically the opposite of that slave crown because 
It allows yeah. everybody else to be his slave. Try not doing what the king tells you to do. The music's cool. Yeah, look at those fans. Yeah. I guess they gotta keep the castle... Ventilated. Ventilated. Well ventilated. Yeah, the castle has these, like, the turrets, or, like, what What do you, what do you call those it? Are, yeah, they're turrets, like the big silos. Yeah, that you would have, <laughs> but instead of having guards up there, <laughs> they're giant fans. Uh, yeah, so it's almost like instead of being, like, rooms you could walk up to the top <laughs> to, it feels like they're, like, empty tubes with fans in the end. Right. And then the king's gonna be like, come, take all my treasure. <laughs> Welcome to my castle. <laughs> my treasure room is open to you. These look horrifying. They look like rotisserie chickens. <laughs> <laughs> they may look kind of like rotisserie chickens, but they are suits of armor. Yeah. <laughs> while, while we're sitting here going like, you wouldn't believe the graphics if you could see them. <laughs> it's also still like at a point where we often are looking at things going like, what is that? Is that really? a dog? Is that, yeah. Is that, <laughs> what is? You're like, I see a fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How rude of me to turn my back to a lady. Uh, okay. Yeah, here we meet King Edgar, who is a bit of a, a womanizer. Of yeah, sorts. he's like a, a rakish king. Is he flicking us off right the now? Young king of Figaro Castle, ally to the Empire, and a master designer of machinery. Okay, he's our Sid, or Sidero. This is never what. This never makes sense. No, he doesn't build machinery. Uh, yeah, he just can use machinery. He can use he can use tools in combat, but it never comes up that he's like, "Let me design a machine right, right. now." I guess the idea is maybe he designed this castle, but that's Whoa. not real. We'll get into spoiler that spoiler alert. Is he's, he not flicking us off right now? I think he's doing this. The thing you're referring to is the finger wag. Yeah, it's the most popular animation in the game. Yeah. Like, a character will kind of, like, look at the screen. I don't know how to describe it, because they don't really look anywhere. <laughs> right. But their eye shifts, and, like, what I guess is a finger pops up and moves, like, a pixel back and forth. So there's often, like, a scene where a character will smarmily be like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Edgar especially does this. But mm -hmm. I think other people do it at various times, too. I still think it looks like a middle finger. I mean, right here on the freeze frame, it definitely looks like he's just sticking up a middle <laughs> finger. It does. <laughs> but maybe... I thought it was the other guy that does that. They all do that, because it's cool. It's one of the things they can do. <laughs> you know, like, Wait, so they so all many, do it? A lot of people have the finger thing in this game. Interesting. Okay, I see Or what maybe he's even sh extending his hand so you can shake it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, like it's his thumb. Yeah, it could be okay. that. Okay, it could, could be like, that. Look at this. I think it's that. I definitely, it's hard for me not to see it as a middle finger. Well, I didn't shake his hand. I'm Edgar, King of Figaro. Now that Terra is with Edgar, Locke is like, I don't need to hang out here anymore, and he pieces out. Yeah, I guess the takeaway from this is that, like, somehow Locke and this king know each other. This How do they know each other? They're part of the Returners. We're right, going to find out. that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> he runs away. What? Please relax while you're here. It's not in my blood to harm a lady. <laughs> so Tara, still confused from her slave crown ordeal, starts asking questions about why. Yeah, why? But she starts asking why? the big questions, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Look, why are you helping me? Is it because of my abilities? Like, well, I didn't want to be that forward about it. <laughs> I'll give you three reasons. First Great. of all, your beauty has captivated me. Uh oh. Second, I'm dying to know if I'm your type. See, he's the end. Okay. I mean, Are I'm they all type. edge in this game, maybe? And I guess your abilities would be a distant third. I don't buy it. It's revealed late. He doesn't know that she has magic. So right. She's, this is like, he literally thinks that. She's talking about sex. It's got to be, right? It has right? to be, right? Because <laughs> what other way is there to read it if not if you don't know what her abilities are? It's like, her abilities. Which the fact that there can be, like, this level of... Nuance? Of nuance in this game. You think it really last, does mean that? No, I think they literally are talking about different things, because later there's a whole big deal where he's like, whoa, you used magic? Right. Like it's It would have been hilarious if so in that scene later when he realizes that, he's like, I thought you were just like a fuck puppet. Like, yeah, what? no, I like, think I this is literally like a misunderstanding. And that he thinks that she's talking about sex. Yeah. But he's like, your sex abilities are a distant third to your looks. Yeah, exactly. And whether or not he's you like, like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's like, how good you are at the sex is not why I'm interested. <laughs> 
Yeah. Because I'm obvious. He's, he's, I don't know. His character is weird. He's the king. Mm hmm. But, but everybody he can't in this, get laid well, because everybody in this sounds like the king is hitting on me, and it's like gross. Because like, what? I want to be the queen? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, also, I mean, this kingdom in the desert has like fifteen maybe people, pe- twenty in, people in it, in, it total. in the whole kingdom. Yeah. And I guess he's also kind of a Sid because he's a machine guy. I don't know. He's all. Of them. Yeah. He's everybody. Guess my technique's getting a bit rusty. So Edgar can't get anybody to sleep with him, but his technique is getting rusty? There's a rustiness to him. Is the rusty trombone, his new technique. <laughs> right, okay, uh, yeah, that's gotta be it. That must be what he means. <laughs> he's trying to entice her, but she doesn't understand what he's talking right. about. He's like, I'm rusty. Because she's been slave-crowned for her whole life, so she's like, got an empty head, and this guy's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> empty head, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hmm, I suppose a normal girl would have found him dashing, but I'm hardly normal. So we begin our first routine castle walkabout. Yeah, talk to all the people in the castle. Uh-huh. Wh- what does this guard have to say? I heard the Empire is using something called magic? <laughs> we walk to the very top of the castle where there's like a ledge to look out over the desert. What can I do up here? Jump to a dramatic death. Jump to a very dramatic death. They love the castle in the center of a desert, which I don't understand where their water supply is coming from. But that's like, it yeah, looks cool, but it's also a thing that could never... Are, is there some kind of system for getting water out of the deep? You if know? they have that kind of technology, they should use it for other things. They should be, other than survival, you mean. <laughs> they should, if they have the technology to survive, they shouldn't be using it for that. Good Good point. In the desert? I guess that should, they should use it for that and other things, Jeff, I mean. Jeff, how should they use the technology to draw water up from the other underground so they can live in an arid climate? I, look, I'm not, I'm just the idea man. Or, <laughs> You're the... I'm the guy before the idea man. I'm the guy who's like, there should be an idea man. Yeah. <laughs> There's things I'm holding back. Gotcha. That have to do with irrigation, desert life. Interesting. Really? <laughs> no. You're not? Uh, I'm just gonna get into a place where you don't know if I'm fucking with you or I not. I mean, I really don't. I didn't know right <laughs> but then. But seriously, there is some insight into how these people live and why they're here. But uh, I wouldn't buy any of this yet. Well, how much cash do I have? Not a lot. I, I have can... 5,000. Or 6,000 almost. That's true. What is what is good? Can I then raise... again, maybe you should just go ahead and buy it. I don't know. I can ransack this guy's store? I find it weird that... Yeah, I'm trying to imagine, like, walking into a store and, like, putting a bunch of stuff on the counter and buying it, and then walking behind the counter and, like, opening a box and just <laughs> taking what's in it. Yeah. Like, never breaking eye contact. Or, like, walk, out. <laughs> walk right the fuck out. Yeah, it's like I walk into a convenience store and I buy seven packs of gum, and then I, like, I'm stealing this pack, though. Yeah, and you do it right in front of them. Too. Right, I'm like, I'm taking this one, but I'm paying for the others. You know, I get, I bet if we tried, I bet they, would they stop us? What would they do? They'd probably be like... Man, I, I wish we could just cut to audio of us shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not one for shoplifting. No, I don't, don't want to do that. that. But I no. bet if, I'm saying if you did it... With confidence? Intimidatingly enough. If we could be intimidating. Right. I don't know if we could be intimidating. I don't feel like an intimidating person. Well, I mean, his store is in a closet. It is. In the castle. It has no (laughs) windows. His shop is in a windowless room. With, like, some storage in it. It's a bad shop. It feels like there's probably, like, a mop in there with him. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Hello, friend. Classic walk around the castle and talk to everybody. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. This castle incorporates some of the most high-tech devices in existence. For example, oops, they're all top secret. Oh, interesting. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There must be an irrigation system involved with the fans. If you were touring a castle in Europe, yeah, and one of the tour guides looked at you <laughs> and seriously said, "This castle houses some of the most high-tech devices ever created." Period, and then did not elaborate on it. Well, and was just like, "Oops, I can't talk about that." Yeah. Yeah, I would this be like, stone "This building. ancient castle? <laughs> this what do you stone- mean?" In the Alhambra in Spain? Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start like looking around for like 
ancient levers that maybe I mean, I could guess reveal. to be fair, you'd be in this castle and you'd be like, there's giant fans everywhere. It's a normal <laughs> stone castle, but it has big metal fans. Yeah, there's something to do with the fans. Who's got the crystal madness around here? Figaro Castle is the most modern structure in the world. See, it's like the tower in Dubai. Like, why did they build that thing there? Doesn't seem like they should, right? You know, I don't think that I... I think that there's water supply. Is this a library that also has a pool? Like, what is this? I think it's green carpet. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see it that way now. <laughs> but I see what you mean. Yeah, like walking in, like, a waiting pool. Yeah, yeah. No books oh, on the shelves? Oh, no books? Boo. Boo. Yeah, our favorite thing from Final Fantasy IV, the mistranslated books, is not here in this game. But don't worry, there's a whole bunch of other insanity to be delighted by. Yeah, but seriously, huge by. downgrade to not have books yeah, on the shelves. you want books. You, you want to see the titles. Scholars the world over are doing research on magic. Silly people. Scholars. <laughs> <laughs> I come in here just to make fun of them. <laughs> Ba, ba, ba. Can I sleep? Weapons and items manufactured here are sent to South Figaro. That's a weird thing for somebody standing up here to be saying. Yeah, he's just standing up here thinking about the exchange of goods and services between this castle and the one <laughs> south, you know. Like, it really is wild, man. You like, think about it. We've been connected. It's like we're connected, but I ain't even never met anyone from there. <laughs> Like, you ever see this movie, like, 21 Grams, man? <laughs> like, Have you seen that movie? Uh, I think I saw it, like, when it first came out. It's like a crash thing, right? Where it's like, everyone's lives are just interconnected and shit. Probably. I always think about these types of movies like Crash and Babel and 21 Grams mm -hmm. and Syriana, mm -hmm. and I think I just realized what I hate about them so much. <laughs> it's like they come from a place that's like, think of who made this. Like, what kind of fucking narcissist? <laughs> has the realization that, like, your life affects other people and goes like, oh, my God, <laughs> I never revelation. thought of it. I never thought of that. I have to I have to spend millions of dollars to make a movie where, like, the whole point of it is, like, think about it. Like, you don't know, like, how someone else's day is going. I know. You know, like, it, it's so maddening to yeah. me. Yeah, I do. Well, yeah, this is... <laughs> We got to cut it there because I, I was going to go off on a whole like, but you know what's a good example of that is is Cloud Atlas, which I'm a defender of. And it's oh like, God, no, let's that's not. A whole thing. That's a whole thing. Forget that. <laughs> that movie sucks. <laughs> I haven't actually seen it. I know that it's got Benicio Del Toro and that it's like, because like the, when the body dies, immediately loses 21 grams of weight. And that's, that's the soul, man. That's the soul. <laughs> Which I looked into that whole thing for the other podcast, and like, I'll take a rest. It's deeply, deeply bullshit. Oh, oh, because I think I told you about this. This was like a fascinating way in which it was bullshit. Because it was like a guy in the early, early 1900s who had like people on a, like on a uh, scale as they died, which is like a horribly unethical situation to like mm -hmm. have to put together. So he found that when they died that, like, they lost this amount of weight and that dogs didn't when dogs died on the thing. And so the dogs don't have a soul. And humans do. But it had to do with the fact that when you die, all of your pores open. I'm gonna come in here because it's funny how I'm getting this close to right. Your lungs are air cooling your blood as it passes through, but when it stops, the blood stops circulating in the body, so there's a sudden rise in body temperature, and that also perfectly explained why the dogs didn't have any weight loss, because they cool themselves by panting. The real point <laughs> is that nobody could ever... You're saying that nobody has a soul. That's just I'm saying nobody point. has a soul, and <laughs> nobody could recreate this incredibly unreliable experiment from 1907, where this guy put some dying people you on, heard it on here like first, an old folks. Nobody old has a soul. <laughs> if there's one thing I want to say... 21 grams is bullshit. I <laughs> you know was what? just thinking... I'll stand I'm by too it. bad about the pores, because I was just thinking, like, man, if we could, like, reverse death one day, you could just go get, like, a spa treatment where you die and all of your pores open, and then they bring you back, and you're like, oh, my skin feels, like, great. <laughs> that would be you a know, great treatment. I released treatment. all of the uh, oils See, out and, you know, got a fresh start. All you gotta do is stop your blood from circulating for, like, like three minutes. 
I bet you feel great after that. Yeah, you, um, after the loss <laughs> of oxygen to your head. And because dogs don't have pores, it didn't happen for them. Mm. I feel like it, there was something else to it, too. Future me can look it up. Wait, but before we move on from this, so, uh -huh. okay, let's just, it, from this guy's point of view, uh, he's doing science back in a time where you're doing, like, weird magic science. Right, yeah. <laughs> where it's, like, not really, it's... <laughs> well, you're ascribing he, meanings to well, things. Well, yeah, exactly. The way you're viewing it is totally different from our lens from today. Right, so right. he makes this discovery where he's like, holy shit, like, I bet that's the soul leaving the human right. body. Uh -huh. And then he makes this discovery and he's like, dogs don't have souls. <laughs> but then he's not compelled to go, like, I've got to know what animals have souls and what animals don't like right. wouldn't you right. if you discovered this wouldn't let's you, kill some chimps yeah like let's kill some ants get the birds in there like, like bugs like what <laughs> we gotta know what animals are okay to kill yeah you know <laughs> because only some of them have souls <laughs> yeah maybe the assumption he made was any non-human didn't have a soul i mean he might have jumped to that conclusion mm -hmm. i guess well he's jumping to other conclusions instantly he's going like the 21 grams thing is a soul not a little bit of water weight true true <laughs> True. I mean, that is quite a conclusion to jump to. <laughs> Let's get back to the game. <laughs> he recently tried to hit on the high priestess. Surely he's talked to you. But wait, wait a minute. One more, just one more thing <laughs> okay, about this. Okay. How funny would it be if, like, the going like wisdom of the crowd for like all like so much of humanity was like only humans have souls. And giraffes. Giraffes also. But <laughs> only humans two. and giraffes. We tested all of them. You know, like, and, and <laughs> they both lose weight. Yeah. We don't know what God's plan is for the giraffe, but we feel confident in saying that there's probably giraffes in heaven. Right. Because <laughs> like all the souls. depictions of heaven include humans and giraffes. <laughs> just humans <laughs> on the clouds and just like tons of giraffes. <laughs> It must be because when you first walk in, they want you to just go straight to the... That's a good... Oh, boy. Oh, I put my foot on the table. You'll never guess what's happening right now, but we're looking at a blank screen, and the audio is still playing from the game, but there's no way to continue the game. A thing we kept struggling with a lot this season was, like, our setup for recording kept resulting in us being like, ah, oh, it's fucked up now. Right. We, we have a new system because of this fucking video version, so you're welcome for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it took. there were some struggles. Oh, no. You think that's the SNES fucking up? It's they do. that sensitive? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> what if I can get it back? Can I get it back? Come on, baby. Talk to me. <sighs> when did I last save? Did I... Did that... That didn't save when I went to the... No. Inn. You've got to walk back to the castle and talk to Edgar and stuff. <sighs> I was talking to God, my friend Bill about playing these games, and I was like, yeah, we're about to start six, and he's like, that's another one that I've started many times. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I always just feel like I get to a point where, like, I die, and I've lost, like, an hour, and I just, I don't want to do it, so I don't. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that happens all the time. He's like, yeah, those games are like, oh, this, I'm here. Yeah, to the left and down. Yeah. I, I can get back. Do you mind, actually, because I was going to, actually, I wanted to... Take a couple of bites of food. Yeah, and he, he's like, yeah, you're always playing, but like you kind of are looking for any reason to stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this feels great. It's been an awesome game. It's our. It's off to a great start. So stoked. I'm so stoked I can like narsh. Look at this background. I know, because we're in the woods. Man. Like, the beginning of this game, almost, is like, they just wanted to show off backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you walk through, like, three biomes in, in yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah, can climates this different even exist this close to each other? Yeah, I mean, like, you walk out of the woods and you're in the, in the like, sand dunes. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. We get back to the castle and resume our exploration. Right. Our favorite thing to do, explore towns. This woman, the matron. matron, is saying Edgar has a twin brother. He was such a nice boy. Oh, dot, really? Dot, dot. Edgar had a twin brother. Mm -hmm. So we go to a flashback where we meet Edgar's brother, Sabine. Mm -hmm. We don't know his name yet, well, though. Well, his name, he's just, he's just a youth. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He runs up and is As just named him. Youth. Some character named Youth runs up. Youth. Brother. What's wrong with father? What's all this talk of his successor? 
My name is Youth? They haven't named him yet. Oh, he's just a youth. I yeah. was like, I honestly thought that... <laughs> this character's that was straight name straight is up, Youth? Yes. I was like... <laughs> I mean... Youth there's Johnson. There's fantasy games with worse naming. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I totally thought that that was... Youth Johnson. They call him brother. Don't call him youth. Tears? What is meaning of tears? What do tears mean? Edgar's twin brother, who traded the throne for his own freedom. Sabin. Sabin? Sabin. Sabine. That. Sabine. Sabine. Right? <laughs> Could be seven. So yeah, Sabine was like supposed to ascend to the throne because he was the older twin? Is he like... like? No, I think it was like... Okay, so with the <laughs> flashback here and then the one we get later, the situation is like, your dad's gonna die. We need to discuss like which one of you is taking over. Right. And Sabine is like, I don't really want to do this. And Edgar is like, well, it's not even really up to us to decide. Right. Then, uh, with their dad, who's dying, who is the king, the who king. is deciding his own succession, is not like one of you should. I. Th- he's just leaving I it. He's like, he I leave it up to you. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna argue. Decide on, I'm amongst gonna argue yourselves. On the, on the sake of the game here, and say like, maybe he's too sick to decide. Maybe he's real. And they're like, we never thought about succession before now. Yes, yes. I mean, this and game there's is two. There's twins. <laughs> what are we gonna do? This game is operating at the level of like, look at this tragic scene, but not at the level of like it, having it make like total sense. Total yeah. sense. Yeah. Yes. His name is Sabin. When he ran away, he was a sweet little child. I wonder what he's like now. I think up here is just another jumping point, but yeah, another suicide ledge. Yeah, like I think this town is like, oh, we're allies with the Empire. They, it seems like they're destroying everybody they're allies with also. They seem bad right now, but we're allies with them. Right. Get out of the way of the door. All right, chicken man. <laughs> Beyond is the Figaro Castle engine room. The engine room we're for the castle? We're ready to leave at a moment's notice. What are you... Wait, is the castle... That's dangerous. An airship? Is the castle an airship? That's dangerous. The engine room for the castle? The castle's engine room. And you are being suspiciously quiet. I am being suspicious. This series does love a good flying castle. Yeah. And there are air fins all over this fucking place. What the fuck? I demand to see. And why would you put you. a castle it's in the middle of a desert? To draw water up from the ground well. Or because you can move it anywhere, and if you really need water, you can just, like, fly it over there. I missed doing this. I love when we play these games. Like, it's a really fun yeah. time. There's something about the settling in for the long haul of it. The whole business of succession was so repugnant to Sabin, the king's brother, that... He fled the castle forever. The succession was settled with a coin toss. Yeah, that see, that's why they didn't talk about it. He right. didn't want to talk about it. They'd always be like, Sabine, we got to talk about the succession. He'd be like, no, fuck off. I'm going to live forever. And right. they'd be like, well, we got to talk about it. He's like, death, no. So then no, it should have been obvious from the beginning. We're like, well, we all know that Sabine doesn't want it, so it's going to be Edgar. And so there really wasn't a question when he died of who was going to take over because Sabine never wanted it. And I mean, aside, we're not getting here is what was the popular opinion, you know? Right. Maybe everyone else was like Sabine doesn't really want to do it but like he also Edgar like the the potential, he's hitting on everybody yeah the potential for like a PR scandal right. seems like it seems inevitable <laughs> this guy is, is cannot be the public face of the kingdom Sabine is Just he may be a bodybuilder, bodybuilder but he's yeah. he's not a rapist <laughs> yeah but like everyone else who's in the kingdom is like we were going to talk about it right. we were going to get the council of nine together yeah and we were going to have like the meeting where we would decide which half right. of us dies. Oh, the Game of Thrones was going to happen. Uh-huh. We were all getting ready for it. Yep, yep. And then the Game of Thrones never came. That's <laughs> stupid. But well, because anyway. one of the people who wa- <laughs> one of the two people who wanted the throne was like, I don't want to play. Yeah. But yeah, it's a big coin toss that they uh, that they decided their fate on. They decided whether or not they would continue playing their game of thrones. <laughs> The uh, coin toss. Uh, yeah. That's, I like how they roll. <laughs> we know about epic coin tosses. Yeah. King Edgar, someone from the Empire to see you. Ugh, probably, probably Kefka. Kefka. So we cut to, like, outside the castle in the desert where Kefka's there, like, what the 
fuck? Why does this guy live in the middle of the desert? Yeah, I mean, I do kind of like this as like the first time you see this villain because he's portrayed as this. He's not a grand thinker. Or, right, he's just right. like a guy who's like, I don't want to walk in the desert. Right, he's like, nobody likes walking in sand. Yeah. And he's just lamenting I the mean, shit. I mean, like, as we get further, we'll probably get more. I'm like, I'm not like totally in love with like Kefka as a villain, I, mm. you know, but like I do, when you like pull it apart like this, there is something like interesting about it. Yeah, I like where he starts. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think maybe the emperor is the bad guy, but we know that like Kefka's not in charge, but we also... Because we know, we know that he's the real bad guy. Yeah, which I guess if, like, you know, like, the tropes of this kind of game really well, you're always like, well, there's, like, the sub-bosses, right, you know, so you right. might... But this is subverting that it's, by making the sub-boss the real boss. It's hard to think boss. about, because, like, we couldn't even come into this game without both of us knowing the vil- that he's the villain. <laughs> right, you know? like, yeah. From the beginning, we yeah. were like, this guy is the villain. Right, exactly. Before we even hit go. But, <laughs> yeah. like, if you, didn't, it's, if you didn't know that, maybe you would You think- might think that there would be a reveal of a bigger villain than right. him, potentially. Yeah. But anyway, he's out in the desert. Mm-hmm. Ahem, there's sand on my boots. And he walks up into... Oh, right, now I'm Ed- I'm Edgar now. Hello, Kefka. Haley. You talk to him? Oh, my God. Haley. Don't you do that. Don't you nose around the power button. Haley, come here. Yeah, come here. What brings Kefka, humble servant of Emperor Gestal? A girl of no importance, recently escaped from us. <laughs> we are a girl of absolutely no importance. There's no reason that we may want yeah, her back. We're just, I, they just sent the second in command to come. She escaped from us, and we heard that she found refuge here. And don't worry about how important she is, because she's not. We couldn't care less about her, but we were in the neighborhood... So we thought maybe we would drop by. I truly hope nothing happens to your precious Figaro. That's uh, quite the threat. I hope nothing happens to your extremely well-defended castle. That is clearly an airship. I'm like trying to read your face, and I know that you're working on... You're doing a good job of just focusing on the game. Oh, whoops. So, okay, so basically Kefka gives Edgar like a, a mob threat. Right. He's like... You'll be sleeping with the fishes, but in the desert where there are no fishes. Yeah, that's exactly what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird because he could, instead of giving like a... It would be a shame if something... He could give a straight up threat. Right. There's no reason for... He's well, I guess not this is still the like, diplomacy threat, you know? I guess There's it is a, allies. It's a di- diplomatic threat. Right. You know? Then we cut to Locke and Terra who are hiding, like, one bedroom over right. from where this conversation <laughs> was happening. You're Locke, right? Edgar told me about you. She didn't get his name before? <laughs> they walked all the way to this castle together. I like don't know. they escaped Narsh yeah, th- together, th- and never... now she's like, who are you? <laughs> what is your name? You're... Tara. I've heard about you from this the... guy that I met after I met you. The more I'm watching this game, the more I'm like, Tara, the protagonist with, like, no point of view. Uh, yeah. She doesn't ever know where she is or who she's with or what the fuck is going on or what she should do about it. And then when she learns about it, she's still not sure. She still makes just she's confusing still... <laughs> choices that you could only chalk up to, like, brain damage. Yeah, she's like... Like, I really not, think like, the slave crown does more, has more side effects going on with it than it just ind- indicates. Yeah, and they all like look at her like, "Wow, this is really her story right now." She's in the <laughs> middle of it. And she's like, has no idea. Is it true you're a thief? He's like, uh, "That's just my class." <laughs> yeah, I don't and actually that's steal from people. Like, treasure hunter. Right. Watch this. Watch how clearly they're about to explain the situation. On the surface, Edgar pretends to support the Empire. (laughs) The truth is, he's collaborating with the Returners, an organization opposed to the Empire. Okay. I am his contact with that group. The old man you met in Narsh is... Narsh is one of us. (laughs) Empire, but I'm a soldier of the Empire. That's not true. They were using you. Things are different now. You're a returner. I don't understand. Just listen to what I have to say to you now. What should I do? Can you imagine what this this explanation would have sounded like in Final Fantasy IV? Oh my Edgar god. Edgar is pretending... Oh my like, god. Edgar, Edgar is using the tactic of deception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To... to be friendly with the Empire. Right. <laughs> You'd be like... He's what? But he sure (laughs) bluffs about it. He sure bluffs, yeah. (laughs) Why can he run, but I can't run? 
Oh my god. Yeah, we step outside and the castle is ablaze. Yeah, it's unclear how this happened. <laughs> Yeah. But I guess Kefka immediately made good on his threat and set a stone castle on, like the whole thing. It's like it's, burning down. The stones are on fire. I don't know how he did it or what he's doing. And there's people just like running back and forth. Like they clearly have no plan for fire here. Like right. they haven't run any drills. Nope. There's no extinguishers where they should be. <laughs> exactly. This is not up to code, even though it's the most modern castle in the city. If they have an irrigation system, they should have a fire suppression system. Well, we're about to learn they don't have they it. They don't have it. Yeah, is yeah, okay. <laughs> the whole <laughs> castle's on fire. What how did this happen? What, what is happening? What's happening? <laughs> it's the Empire. It's, it's Kefka. Kefka. Oh we did he did warn us. Bring me the girl. Now I the one she has oh, no importance. Oh, then <laughs> Welcome to my barbecue. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to bring him the girl. Is this a classic? We're gonna do what Edgar he says. Thing. Haley, you don't need Haley, to fuck with no. that. <laughs> the fuck are you even thinking? <laughs> what? What? She why? Was just like would, she was like, why this, would this you thing. do that? That's not a toy for you if that's what you think. Kefka, you suck. I have no choice. You hopped on a chocobo. Escape on my chicken, or, or maybe I do. <laughs> 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 Shameful that a king should flee, leaving his people behind. How utterly delightful. And then we hop on our own chocobos. Mm -hmm. That's a sick move. Okay, dive now. Yeah. Yeah. Dive now? So I was having trouble wrapping my head around this on the day, but Edgar hops on a chocobo, runs around to the front of the castle, yells to the guards inside the castle, like right past Kefka, dive, and then runs away. And then the castle submerges under the sand. Mm -hmm. It goes down into the sand. It dives down the whole fucking castle. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, shit. It's happening. The whole castle. Submerge mode? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not going to go up into the air. It's going to go down? No one can touch the people of Figaro. Whoa. Holy shit. It's like a little turtle going down into its... Desert show. See, I forgot that's what I was going to do. I thought I was going to fly away. <laughs> really? Yeah. You, did. <laughs> you were not telling me that you thought I was right? I, I totally thought you were right. That's I knew great. it did something. So Kefka sends his mech suited armor guys after you, and you wind up like getting into a desert fight with them. And if you use magic as Terra, Edgar freaks the fuck out. Did, did, did you just see what I saw? Oh, I cast magic. Oh, shit. And he's like, what? This kid seems loaded for bear. He jumped in the Whoa. middle of the fight and was like, hold on, hold on. It breaks the fourth wall. Like, the battle freezes so that Locke and Edgar can go have, like, a conversation in the middle of it. About, right, like, right. Terra using magic. Terra uses magic, and the, they're like, hang on, mech soldiers. Time out. M. A. G. I. C. C. <laughs> magic? She used magic. But Tara, where on earth did you learn that? I've never actually seen magic before. <laughs> yeah, do you want to do him as like Jimmy where, Stewart? Where did you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we win that fight and it cuts back to Kefka and he's boiling mad. Son of a submariner! They'll pay for this. Yeah, this translation is so much better. Like, it's this crazy is like having how... fun with stuff. Was that a bad person? I, I, she's like, I'm what scared. the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh, Tara, there's someone I'd like you to meet. <laughs> We're members of the Returners. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they could do better than Returners. That's not great. Our mentor, Bannon... Oh boy! <laughs> certainly like to he meet seems you. a little weird and angry, <laughs> but trust me, he's a visionary. He's got a red face. He's he looks like he's been drinking his whole life. He looks like hepatitis. Yeah, he looks like a swollen liver. <laughs> magic is going to be the key to winning. Magic is going to be the key. By magic, I mean killing people by any means necessary, Mm-mm. including. <laughs> Act magic. <laughs> Including through magic. It's like worth remembering that 
Tara can't even speak in complete sentences still. <laughs> right, right. She like is a blank person who doesn't understand what's happening She's around her. She's had the slave crown on her. <laughs> it's taken off and everybody's like, come with us. Yeah, and, and they're, all, like, they're ah. all like, Tara, here's the deal. We're a part of an organization that opposes the Empire who recently has been putting their force on the world and right. seems to be taking it over. But we're a part of the Returners who are set on like stopping them and returning to the old ways. And she's You're, like, we're going to use your magical powers with our visionary like revolutionary guy named Bannon and we're going to stop the Empire, and you're coming with us now to meet Bannon. And she's like, I have magic. She's like, <laughs> yeah, she's so, but, but Edgar is basically like, reveals to her that no humans can use magic except her. And she like screeches to a halt, like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's also funny the idea that like the Empire is making like technology out of magic, and people are like, we're not sure how they're doing it. <laughs> when like yeah. fucking squirrels in this game have magic. Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing, <laughs> like, something we'll get into just, in a little bit. Like, magic. Just magic is everywhere. Yeah. Like, get the magic out of the squirrels. <laughs> Torture them and get their magic. <laughs> yeah, like, she screeches to a halt on her chocobo. <laughs> I apologize. I'm sure the empires are going to come after you. And for some reason, we've decided that Edgar is Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, that's like one of the only... They're, they're, get used to that. Get used I to that, because yeah. there's very few consistent voices that we do for any characters, but Edgar is always Jimmy Stewart. I don't have like a good explanation for that. Yeah, for those of you who don't know Jimmy Stewart, just go look up like Jimmy Stewart talking about his dog, Bo, on The Tonight Show. You'll get a total sense <laughs> of Jimmy Stewart. There's gonna be a run of the bank. If they, they get your hands, their hands on you again, well, the world's finished. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, you you want to understand your own powers, right? Then I think we need to consult with Bannon. Okay, to the south there's a cave that leads to South Figaro. This music's awesome. Doo -doo -doo. Oh god. What? Oh, oh, whoa, boy. Oh, I remember this being bad. Oh boy. <laughs> so we're on a chocobo, but the way that this view works is that you're this giant chicken on a very, very flat land that expands outward. Right. And the flat land has images printed on it. Like, imagine, like, if you're walking on a big sheet of paper. That's and kind th of wrapped around a ball, though. Right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can see the horizon. But there's, like, parts of it that are green and parts of it that are blue and parts of it that are brown. When you walk up to the brown thing, it's like a child's playground game where you're only using chalk, but you're like, this area you can't walk out of. There's, like, right. written boundaries, <laughs> but only on yeah, a flat can't surface. See it until you get there right, either exactly. you're like oh okay there's a wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like it turns very the whole thing is like sort of sickening it's clear that we have yet to hit peak chocobo we, like yes this is the one and only time we get on a chocobo in this game the entire and game every other time it's offered up we're like fuck that we're walking <laughs> yeah <laughs> This is how we're traveling around the world map this now? This is Chocobo. This is Chocobo travel. travel? Holy shit. Oh, those are mountains? Yeah. They're flat. They're absolutely flat. I know, flat. and that's what sucks about it is everything is flat. Everything is a fully <laughs> flat surface. Oh my fucking god. So what are you looking for right now? I want to go to another town. Okay. Any town. Haha. <laughs> oh, oh. King Edgar, where are you headed? Oh, through the cave and eastward to South Figaro. Okay. R return to the castle and tell the others we're safe. We'll see how long before that voice morphs into something just monstrous. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can, like... Anyway, we walk into a cave. What is the cave called? I I don't know. We go South to cave, cave to the so cave, cave to the mountain. Uh, yeah, there's a cave that leads to a mountain. Well, it's like it's like there's mountains in our way to where we want to go. So there's like caves that lead to like another. It's like a tunnel through the mountain, right? Kind of. And we find a spring, and the spring not only heals you, but it's got like a turtle there's in it. There's a turtle sitting in it. <laughs> like, what Try is to the remember deal with this the turtle for later this year. Yeah. <laughs> remember, <laughs> put a marker in your brain for the world's least satisfying payoff. <laughs> months and months from now, remember this. If you really like unsatisfying payoffs, remember the turtle. Well, like, oh, recovery ooh, spring. We heard about nice. these at school. Yeah. <laughs> There's I a, read about it. Look at that <laughs> turtle. Yeah, can you talk to him? I can't get in the water. You must be able to come around and out through that. Let's save outside of oh, here. Oh, fucking good thinking. 
right? For the fans wondering whether we learned our save often lesson, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, a little it's bit. Really We're a better thing about it. That only autosave can really mitigate. Yeah. You know, like you can try to do better. And it's like in between these games, we play modern games which have autosave. So it's like we keep getting reincorporated into the modern way of thinking of don't mm-hmm. think about your saves. I will say though, like some of the, I kind of miss that feeling of being like we haven't saved in like three hours. I know. I so do like, think that you lose something special. Fight. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thinking. Using my thinker, the old noodle. The old noodle. I guess? Is that because, like, brain folds look kind of like noodles? Is that where that comes it from? It could be, or it could just be, like, old people used to say stupid things. The young people noodle. say stupid things, too, yeah. but, like... Old people were young ones. They were young and ones, they and they must things. have said dumb yeah. things, yeah. I'm just gonna have him steal, and him auto-crossbow. That's definitely one thing that I, de- I strongly believe, is that there's never been a generation... That didn't say the kids these days. Yeah. The kids always suck, man. Kids always suck. And then they grow old and they go like, but these kids actually suck. Yeah. I do remember having a a hilariously similar conversation with my mom once where I was like, she was like, my mom's crazy. And I was like, no, 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 my mom's crazy. (laughs) She's like, no, 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 but like my mom is actually crazy. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. My mom is really crazy. And she's like, no, 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 you really don't understand. (laughs) And it just like went back and forth in a hilarious way for a long time. Did she lose something over there? I'll check. What are you, what are you... What are you fucking around? What are you, what are you doing? What do we got going on for sure? I think it's a bacon scented toy. It doesn't smell like bacon to me. But if you chew on it, maybe it does. Okay, are we doing a dog toy taste test? I'm not chewing on a dog (laughs) Chew on Haley's dog toy. That's completely different from using dog toothpaste. Chew on this dog toy. No, it's not even fresh. If it were fresh, maybe. I can clean it. No, that, no, it's not the, that's not how it, that's not the same. <laughs> what do you know, there's an ass load of random encounters in this game. <laughs> I mean, are you ready for like, 60 hours of this? Yes. Nice. These are called blearies, and they have one eye. And the eye looks pretty red. Like, it, it c- probably can't see you very well. It's all bleary eye. Mm, what's that smell? (laughs) We found like a a house in the middle of nowhere Mm -hmm. and we we walk in and it's empty but the whole time Edgar's going around like there's something familiar about this place. Yeah. It's like Edgar's walking around going like this house. They were his favorite. favorite. The dishes. (laughs) My favorite is that he's like these dishes. Yeah. These look just like his favorite dishes. Yeah. (laughs) Well, he was really into fine china. Nobody could have these plates except for my brother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, like, this is his favorite tea and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is his favorite tea. Who is he? Who who, who are you talking about, Edgar? What is the first part of that sentence? Oh, Saban. Or Saban. Saban. He was was here? It's like Saban. That's why he's walking around here going like, only my brother would have these dishes. Gotcha. <laughs> and this is his tea. And he has a bunch of beds. My brother always had three he beds. He always loved beds. <laughs> but we, if you go in the bread and you hit A, you sleep. I tried hitting A in a well, bed In before. this bed. This is the Bitcoin bed. Oh, if you just go in the bed at all. In this bed. In this bed. I mean, that is the Bitcoin logo, right? <laughs> You're right, it totally is. Now there's this old man. What? What the? You know the sky. You know, you know the sky. Yeah, outside of Sabine's house is an old man who's like, Sabine left days ago because he heard that his master, Duncan, was slain. And so he's going to, like, I don't know, deal with that or something. What is this guy doing here? I don't know who he is to anybody else or why he's here to tell us this. But he's a man. <laughs> he's here with this information. Yeah. Our master, Duncan. He headed into the mountains. I heard Duncan's son, Vargas, was missing as well. I have a bad feeling about this. He's like, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm just gonna walk out of here. I'm just gonna run away. I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, the... When I hear Duncan, I immediately thought of Macbeth. 
South Figaro. You'll find lots of excellent weapons, armor, and relics in our shops. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Dude. 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 <laughs> Welcome to South Figaro. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. I can't catch them. I can't believe it. The Empire will smash us. Even this little girl knows they're, they're- fucked. And that's episode two. We entered South Figaro and start walking around the town. All the townspeople are running away from us and we're like, come here, come here, what do you have to say? And they're like, welcome to South Figaro. There's like a definite point in this game where like everything starts moving pretty quickly, I think. And we're like approaching that. We're about to hit it. It's like really once you get a full party of four. Right. And as soon as you get that. And we're at three right now. We've got Edgar, Tara, and Locke. And we're about to go talk to Sabine. Mm-hmm. So that's next week. And before we go, let's do the next billboard segment. Yeah, you want to check out this week's billboard? We yeah. got a prime location in Perfect the look. Figaro Castle shopping districts, I'm Th- told. That's right. Uh huh. So we're going to go into Figaro Castle. I'm told that there's a message there, and we'll we'll see what the message is. Mm-hmm. You know, this castle is pretty nice for being, you know, it is the most modern castle in the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, feels feels well ventilated in here. Yeah, this carpet is really nice, actually. Like, you don't really get a sense of it from that top-down view, but it's, like, got a really good yeah, quality you know, to it. Yeah, uh, Where Where are the shops? Like, should we ask somebody? Uh, oh, I, I guess it's in, in here. Uh, in here? This yeah, is, with oh, this, this with is this the shop. Yeah, yeah I, forgot, the, I forgot, it's just this guy. In a closet, and there's the billboard, they weren't lying, it is here. It is, it is here, it's I here see on the wall. I see it there on the wall. I, this is the shopping district in Figaro Castle, I can't argue with that. Okay, so let's read the message. I, I love that this is happening, that people are, are actually doing this. Let's take a look at, the, at this message. The message reads, your message here, contact nocappodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, okay, that's so ju- nobody that's just got in touch our, this week. That's just our ad copy. Yeah, okay, all right. So we still haven't gotten one, obviously, but as the you message know. says, you can have one still there. If you specifically want it there, we won't come back to read it, but you can request it to be in... Yeah, the- this space is still available, and I mean, this guy here who's selling the auto crossbow... He would he'll, know. He'll he would, see it. He'll see it. Yeah. Um, and the king obviously shops here. Mm-hmm. So with that, let's go back to the studio. Yeah. So yeah, email us at nocappodcast at gmail.com if you're interested in getting one of these billboards. Mm-hmm. They're in beautiful locations. Yeah. They're, Every single one of them. They're, they're great. We got the best ad agency to help us pick out locations. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm excited to Foot see the Cone rest and of Belding. them. You know? It's gonna it's foot cone and belling. It's gonna take us a while to make it around to all of them, so we kind of had to buy them sight unseen. Right. So I'm psyched to see see the next ones. Yeah. yeah. Please rate and review us on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can find us at patreoncom nocat if you want to support us that way. If you want to get the episodes early or see the video version, you can email us at nocatpodcast at gmail.com, and you can find us at nocatpodcast on Twitter. And that's N O C K A T. That's right. With that, here's a little taste of next week on No One Can Know About This. We're gonna not make scones. Oh, that's a good. We're gonna have to make scones. Fuck, that seems hard. Scone recipe. A lot of cream is deliciously creamy and the essential companion to a batch of British scones. You don't have to go to England to enjoy your tea time treats, though, because clotted cream is so easy to make at home. Really? That's exciting. What is clotted cream? <laughs> clotted cream is a staple of British tea time tables. You'll find it served in a light dish right alongside your scones. Uh-huh. Devonshire cream versus clotted cream. See, now here's where, where Dan might be wrong. Sometimes you may hear clotted cream called Devonshire cream or Cornish cream. It really all depends on the region you're in. There is no difference. <laughs> <laughs> so he is right. Yeah. Yeah, that was what I thought. Because based on... Of course, those in Devon and Cornwall each claim that their cream is superior. Uh-huh. We'll have to take a trip to decide for ourselves. Now that they've gotten me past four folds of advertisements, are they going to show me the fucking recipe? <laughs> What's the difference between clotted cream and whipped cream? 
While at first it. a bowl of clotted cream might look similar to whipped cream, once you take a taste, you'll know the difference. That's what they have to say about that. Great. And now we're on to what's the difference between clotted cream and butter. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> How to make clotted cream. Finally. <laughs> like five pages later. God, the internet sucks. It's the worst. What happened? But if I what want, I can buy a uh, Chevy right here. I can uh, click this and I could buy a car. You know, I usually buy my cars <laughs> off of a banner ad <laughs> on, on a four page pages about deep clotted about cream. clotted right? cream. No, come on, When I'm trying to fucking do a recipe. This can't be worth your money. This can't. <laughs> there's no way. God. And just because this website is going like, but look, this many people visited it. That many no. eyes are on what your ad. F- that many eyes of random people across the fucking globe. No, cost right, per impressions is what happened to the internet. It's like basically boils down to that. We just need to get all the documentation that I'm sure is out there that most of the internet is robots. Well, like yeah. Most of your the impressions are not even people. Whatever. Okay, making clotted cream. You're <laughs> <laughs> uh, Buying jars of imported clotted cream can get quite pricey. What the fuck? It's but still not telling you how to goddamn do it anymore. The hell? Because making it home is incredibly easy. Well, I've heard. Actually, the hardest part about making clotted cream is finding the cream. You see, you have to start with heavy cream that has not been ultra pasteurized. Where are we going to get that? I don't know. (laughs) Simply look for a carton of heavy cream that does not say ultra pasteurized. Maybe normal pasteurized is okay? Okay, we got... Okay, whatever. Hold on. After you find your cream, the second hardest part to make a clotted cream is the weight. It is not a quick process. All right, well, we could do it over a series. The cream has to be heated slowly for 12 hours. Okay, yeah. Which we find easiest to do overnight. In a quarter of a mile. Then cool Turn left for on another Sherman eight. Way. Whoa. Finally, you separate the cream from the liquid, and you have the spread that you've been waiting for. It might take a long time, but it's mostly hands-off. Okay, Here, here's the recipe. <laughs> Ingredients, two cups of heavy cream. That's it. That's the ingredient. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just heat it in a specific way? your oven to 180 degrees, pour the cream into a shallow casserole dish okay. or glass baking dish. Cream should only come up to the sides, one to two inches. The key here is to have a lot of surface area. Place the cream in the oven for 12 hours. Okay. After heating for 12 hours, the cream will develop a skin. Carefully remove the dish from the oven and let it cool to room temperature. Once cool, cover the dish and refrigerate it for 8 hours. After chilled, gently skim the thick layer of clotted cream from the surface, leaving the thinner liquid behind. Okay. It will feel like you're pulling a layer of slightly softened ice cream from the top of a layer of milk. Interesting. So there's, like, cream left over at the bottom. There's going to be some kind of gross milk left at the bottom of this that's been in an oven heated to 180 degrees. Oh, man. And you got to use every part of the milk. you got to just like the buffalo, so we're going to have to figure out. <laughs> that's what they say. They, you got to use every part You've of the milk. arrived at your destination. So basically, we got to... Do you feel comfortable leaving an oven on for 12 hours? That yeah. seems dangerous. Um, no, I'm good with it. Well, I told you about that new milk ad campaign that I heard or saw that milk and I was lights. like, this is disgusting. Where <laughs> it's like, help your kids drink milk so that they can grow up to milk life. Hashtag milk life. And it's like, are you so they're oh, gonna they're milk, milk they're milking li- life? That's what I find is gross I was, about. I it. just thought it was like a bro going like Milk, like he lifts like a barbell. No, like, oh, no milk like, line. That's yeah, no, no, no. no, no that that's was... got milk is not a verb. Milk life is okay. They did not have the right kind of cream. 